<clears throat> Hello everyone. Today I'm going to discuss about the blood diagnostic test. So in the last class also we discussed during the introduction to diagnostic test, uh, what is diagnosis, what is the uh, diagnostic test. So we discussed what is the criteria for the diagnostic test and also different types of the diagnosis we already discussed. So this also uh, another diagnostic procedures, especially the uh, for the blood. So different types of the blood uh, diagnosis tests are available. So we are going to discuss one by one how is going to be helpful to detect the disease. So here I'm going to discuss about the different varieties of the blood test. So especially this going to be do the in the has to be done in the like a investigation procedure place which is called as the laboratory. So the most common type of the blood disorders are blood tests. We are going to some infections or inflammatory conditions. So, so many things we are going to found out through the, this blood test. <clears throat> so blood tests are commonly used diagnostic tests that can provide valuable information about the hematologic system and many other body systems, not only the blood disorders. So because of the, this blood test are going to show the uh, about the uh, causative factors or what are the uh, conditions are going to be affected because of the, the blood, uh, because of the alteration in the like uh, pathogens are may use the reports in the, it like, shows the abnormality in the blood. So with, if you test the blood, we can give the proper uh, uh, clues about the conditions and we can diagnose the condition very easily. So these are the so many different types of blood test. So this blood test, nothing but is the, we are going to do the vein puncture. So how we are going to collect the blood. <clears throat> so we have to collect the, the blood uh, from the vein puncture. So after uh, using the syringe, so we have to puncture the vein, that puncture of the vein for a collection of the blood specimen. So can be performed by the various members of the healthcare team. So many like a uh, healthcare teams, especially like a medical lab technician are going to be more involved here and also maybe who are working in the biochemistical labs and also histopathological labs also. They're also going to be involved in the laboratory investigation procedures. In some institutions, nurses may draw the blood samples. So nurses, maybe medical lab technicians are like a, who are working in the like a, a biochemistry labs. So they are going to be involved in the blood test or uh, withdrawing the blood sample, collecting the blood sample. The first one is the complete blood count. So this complete blood count is going to be the blood test. So there's a CBP also called as the CBP, uh, complete blood picture. So here specimens of the venous blood are taken for the, the complete blood count. That is the CBC, also CBP complete blood pictures. And it's which including the HBB, so HGB, and also hematocrit measurements, erythrocytes, RBC, and leukocyte count, red blood cell indices, and also differential white cell count. So, so these are the so many different types of the blood test. So these tests are going to give the uh, proper information about the condition. So first one is that we are going to check about the hemoglobin. So this is the main intracellular protein of the erythrocyte. So that is the heme and also globin is combined together. These are nothing but is erythrocyte protein. So is going to form the red blood cells. So if any reduction in the red blood cells, so it may make chance to get the difficulty transporting the oxygen because of the, the main blood function is the transporting the oxygen. So because of the any abnormality in the uh, hemo, hemoglobin um, may give the complications. So it is the iron containing proteins in the red blood cells. So they transport the oxygen throughout the body. If any defects in the hemoglobin, so may chance to get the so many complications such as in the anemia and also polycythemia and maybe leukemia, so many different type of uh, symptoms, uh, problems we are going to face. So with this one, so we are going to identify the different type of the complications in our body. So that's the reasons this is going to be ruled out the, what are the cause to factors in the abnormality in the blood. Coming to the hemoglobin test is a, is a measure of the total amount of the hemoglobin in the blood. So supposed to be is the normal hemoglobin in the men. So it's uh, around the 13.5 grams to the 18 grams per deciliter is the normal value in the men. But in the female and the women, so it's going to be 12 to 15 grams per deciliters. So this is the normal. So sometimes if the value is increased, the value is increased, it is called as a polycythemia. So in case of 
if the value is decreased, the RBC count is decreased, so which is called as the anemia. So, so many different types of anemias are there. So, just here we are checking, we are discussing about the only what are the blood tests are available to check the complete blood picture. So, this also about the hemoglobin test. And also next about the hematocrest test. So, this is a measure the percentage of the RBC in the total blood value. So, we are going to check the how much of the percentage is there. So, this is a normal value for the both hemoglobin and also hematocrit vary. So, with the males having the higher levels than the females. So, males are going to have the higher than the females. So, this one is going to be in the men, 13.5 and also 13.5 to 18 grams per deciliters. And the, in the women is going to be 12, uh, 12 to 15 grams per the deciliters. So that is the hematocrit and also hemoglobin percentage. So why we have to check these things? So if you want, if any patient comes with a, any, like a, the patient is a, looks like anemic or weak, if the patient is dull, because of anemia, so many pay, may chance to get, maybe there may be chance to get the severe cough symptoms or maybe the malice or weakness, and also may chance to get the other complications related to the heart function also may be altered. <clears throat> So that's why we have to check all the uh, like a uh, percentage, then only we can rule out the conditions. So next one is the blood count, the complete blood count. And also hemoglobin and also hematocrit increase with the dehydration. So if the water content is lost, the water loss, and also as the blood becomes the more concentrated, if the more concentrated, so this hematocrit and also hemoglobin percentage is going to be increased. And also decreases with the hypervolemia and also resulting in the Hemodilution. And also is going to be the hemodilution. So these are the major uh, like a causative factors for the increasing the hemoglobin and hematocrit, especially for the dehydration. And also hypervolemia is the decreasing the HP percentage, hemoglobin percentage, and also hematocrit percentage. So these are decreases with the hypervolemia and also resulting the hemodilutions. So if it is the hemodilution, so the blood percentage, the hemoglobin percentage is going to be decreased because of the hyperolemia. That means increase the value. And so another blood test is the is going to be RBC count. So we are going to count the So this one is, uh, next one is the complete uh, blood count. In this one, RBC are going to checking. So here is going to, so RBC, what is the RBC? The red blood count. So which is the number of the RBC per cubic millimeter of the whole blood. So if you see, if you observe the blood, in the blood, uh, the fluid is going to be around 45 percentage in the out of uh, 100 percentage is going to be the blood. So in this one, the 55 percent is going to plasma. So here, so how much the RBC percentage is in the blood cells? So that is going to be RBC count. So low RBC counts are indicative of the anemia. So that means if anybody having the less uh, like a uh, HP person, uh, like a RBC count, so it is called as the anemia. And also clients with uh, chronic hypoxia may develop higher than the normal counts. So this condition known as the polycythemia. So that means in case of with the increasing the red blood counts, if it is more than like a uh, like the hemoglobin and also if the red blood cell count is increased, so that condition is called as the a polycythemia. And it's the less less condition if it is the amount of red blood cells in the body, so it indicates it is called as the anemia. So what are the normal values here? For the men, as we can see here, is going to be 4.6 to the 6.6 .6 million uh, millimeter cubes. So this is going to be within the millimeter cubes. So the percentage is going to be the 4.6 millions to the 6 millions. So, and also in the women is going to be the 4 million to the 5 millions. So this is the normal value. So that means if it's less than like a 4 million or it comes to below the 4 millions, so they may chance to get the decrease the red blood cells. So they may chance to get the anemia. And also next one is the leukocytes. Are also called as the WBC cells. So W is the white blood cells. So these are like if uh, it's mainly is a helpful in the phagocytosis. So that means the defense factor is a defense mechanism. So if any bacteria or virus entered our system, so these white blood cells are going to be working as a soldier. It's going to kill the, the bacteria and virus. So it helps in the improve the immune system. So that's why if anybody having any infections, so this count is going to be increased. So because of the soldiers count is going to be increased to protect the system. So it mainly helpful in the, our uh, improve the immune system. So here, if you see here, the normal counts is, uh, is uh, determines the number of circulating WBC per cubic millimeter of the whole bed. 
So this information is useful in diagnosis of certain disorders that have characteristics pattern of the distributions. So if anybody have, anybody having any like a infectious disorders and also if the special characteristics are the characteristic pattern of the distributions. So we are going to found with the, this WBC counts. So high WBC counts are often seen in the presence of the bacterial infections. By contrast, WBC count may be low if the viral infection is present. So that is the variations. If it is viral infections, so the WBC count is going to be decreased. If the bacterial infection, uh, the count is going to be increased. In the differential diagnosis, WBC differentials and also leukocytes are identified by the type and percentage of the each type is determined. If you see the WBC, so many different types of the WBC cells are there. So these WBC cells are going to give the, so different, different uh, like uh, numbers are there. So if you see the basophils and also eosinophils and neutrophils are, and also lymphocytes and monocytes. So these are all the, all the five are the different varieties of lymphocytes are there. So that is the white blood cells. These are going to be the different, different uh, like a number in the different, different conditions. So according to the, uh, condition also that you know, those numbers are going to be vary. Maybe lymphocytes, maybe eosinophils are going to be increased in the particular condition, different conditions. Or basophils are going to be increased in different conditions. So the, according to the uh, increment, increasing the number of the leukocytes also, so we can diagnose the condition, what type of the problem and what we are going to do for that condition. And also this is the normal value. If you see a normal value is the 4,500 to the 11,000 is a millimeter cubic. Uh, and also this is both will be in the male and female are going to be both same. So that is the complete blood count is about the WBC count. And also next about the platelet count. So this platelet counts also, are platelets also known as thrombocytes. So thrombocytes is the, the main function of the thrombocyte is mainly helpful in the is bleeding, uh, blood clot. So if any bleeding occurs, so the thrombocytes are going to be helpful to form the, the blood cut. So like a patch is going to be, is going to be stick to the, the blood vessels. If any cut is there, any leakage is there, is going to stop the blood circulations. So they circulate the bloodstream and bind together to form a clot over the damaged blood vessels. Determining the plate count, plate count is, is a vital in assessing the patients with for the tendency of the bleeding and also thrombosis. So if anybody having any thrombosis problem, that means any blood clot, or also maybe tennis bleeding disorders, so this platelet is very, very important. <clears throat> so next one is the normal range. If you see the normal range of the uh, uh, platelet counts, so it will be the, is 150,000 to the 350,000 is the normal value. So if it is more than this much of value, so if it in case of, in case of any thrombocytopenia, so they may change to, so in those conditions, the value is increasing. Or in case of any severe infections, or is a urinary tract infection, or maybe dengue fever, so some type of like a serious complications, this platelet count is going to be reduced. So that is about the platelet count. Platelet count. So it will be vary, the, depends upon the condition to condition. So if it is high platelets or maybe low platelets, so depends on the, this blood test, we are going to rule out and also rule out the, what is the cause to factor for the abnormal platelet count. And also next one is the serum electrolytes. So serum electrolytes are often routinely ordered for any client admitted to the hospitals as a screening test for the electrolyte and also acid base balance. So serum electrolytes, so this one is going to be mainly if anybody join in the hospitals, so most probably, so all the hospitals are going to check for the, if is there any abnormality in the acid base balance. So in the, if any imbalance, so have to check this, this uh, serum electrolytes. So what are the most common serum electrolyte tests? So it's going to be sodium, potassium and chloride and bicarbonate. So these are the, uh, the basic uh, serum electrolytes <clears throat> tests that we have to do to understand the, the cause to factor for the disease. If you see then the blood, so many, like a, if you see how much the total blood, the fluid from a, in our body, so the total blood is going to be around the five to six liters. So in the female and the male, and also in the female is going to five liters. So if you see in the 50, in the 100 percentage, 55 percentage is going to be plasma, 45 percentage will be the blood. So in the 55 percentage, so most probably the water content, and also so many electrolytes, and also sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, chloride, and bicarbonate. So plasma proteins, albumin, fibrinogen, and also globulins. So these are the plasma proteins. 
and also if you see here so the main function of the water is the solvent for the carrying other substance so it's mainly for the is going to be solving and mixing with the other substances easily and also salts <clears throat> are also called as electrolytes so this one is going to be the main function of these electrolytes are going to be maintain the osmotic balance the ph levels is going to be buffering and so regulation of the membrane permeability so exchange of the ion so is going to be maintained by the electrolytes if there is an abnormality in the electrolytes so there is no exchange of the these electrolytes so it may give the abnormal in the cell so it may be extra growth or maybe the weakening so the, the cells may die or may chance to get the necrosis or gangrene so many all these things are going to be happen because of the if any imbalance of the electrolyte or if there is no exchange of the nutrients so the person may chance to get the weakness and also they may chance to get the other complications plasma proteins albumin fibrinogen and globulin so these are also going to be helpful in the uh, ph buffering osmotic pressure balance and also clotting especially the clotting of the blood and also next one is the defense and also lipid transport so it also helpful in the defense mechanism if any bacteria virus enter is going to be fight with the so foreign materials as well as is going to be lipid transportations so the main this the plasma function is the is mainly is a, is a transported the substance transported to the blood especially for the nutrients glucose and fatty acids vitamins and amino acids and waste products of the metabolism such as the urea and uric acid and also helps in the respiratory gas exchange that is oxygen and carbon dioxide and also hormonal regulations so these are also is the main functions of the plasma so coming to the if you see in the uh, red uh, blood, blood cells so these are going to be different types of the blood cells we can found so these are the three blood the three types of blood cells one is the erythrocytes leukocytes and thrombocytes so erythrocytes also called as red blood cells leukocytes also called as white blood cells platelets also called as thrombocytes <clears throat> just now we discuss how many how many what is the normal level of the value of the red blood cells that is the 4 to 6 millions and also this is going to be in millions but if you see the white blood cells are going to be in thousands only 4000 to the 11000 so the normal value and also platelets are going to be is a 250000 to the 550000 is the normal levels but is going to be altered if they having any abnormality in the system so this is going to be just now we discuss so what are the changes or what are the functions of the plasma and also next one is the this one is the red blood cells so different type of the red blood cells and red blood cells white blood cells and platelets so what are the normal levels of the these electrolytes so these electrolytes are mainly is the just now we discuss electrolytes are the sodium potassium chloride calcium magnesium and also phosphate and so and also serum osmolality so these things also we have to check what is the normal levels so if any abnormality are in the electrolytes so it may gives the electrolyte imbalance so it may gives the disturbance of the muscle functions so it may changes in the heart function so because of these are going to be helpful to so that means the contraction of the muscle especially heart muscles and also nerve muscle that means the nerve impulses are going to be helpful if any uh, imbalance of these electrolytes may damage the heart muscles as well as the nervous system and skeletal muscles so if you see the potassium first one is the potassium potassium is a critical in the nerve and also muscle function so this is the main uh, the function is is responsible for the muscle contraction and also nerve impulses so because it communicating the impulses so mainly is communicating the impulses that means it transmit the impulse signals in the nervous system the movement of the nutrients into the cells and transported of the waste products out of the cells also is mediated by the potassium so it mainly is the movements of the nutrients into the cell and also out of the cells also mediated by the potassium so and also transport the waste products so it takes the nutrients to the tissues cells and also take the waste products from the cells so is uh, because of the potassium so whenever the potassium levels are increased or decreased heart rhythm is going to be affected the heart function is going to be affected so it most commonly we can observe in case of the in the ecg analysis so if you see the ecg analysis the electrolyte imbalance we can found if anybody having any loss of the pot like a potassium deficiency so we can found it so if this see, if you observe the the normal level of the electrolyte balance so that normal levels of the potassium that is 3.5 to the 5.3 is a milli equivalent per liters so this is going to be the 3.5 to 5.3 so if any alteration is this one is so is going to affects on the cardiac rhythm if the cardiac rhythm it may gives the abnormal 
like a contractions an abnormal heartbeat so it may produce the uh, like a uh, atrial flutter or maybe fibrillations atrioventricular conduction block or a synovitreal conduction block may chance to get so because of the this the potassium only the electrolyte so and also sodium so is nothing but these are all the salts so is electrolytes so this is sodium reflects the part of the renal function as the kidney are responsible for the eliminating it from the body so whatever we are going to take if any excess amount of this sodium also very very important it also plays in the part in the motor and nerve functions so this also important role in the motor functions and also nerve functions if any abnormality in the sodium so it may stop the nerve impulses as well as the muscle contractions so it may gives the so many complications patients are tested for the serum sodium levels in cases of the dehydration and also edema abnormal blood pressure changes in the motor functions so if anybody having all these, these complications so they are going to do the sodium test so normal the level of the sodium is 135 to 145 milli equivalent per liters so in case of so many reasons are is a the, the dehydration is because of the maybe high fever maybe diarrhea in case of and also any kidney diseases so they may chance to get the dehydration so in those conditions so is going to alter the nerve impulse functions and signaling as well as the muscle contractions so if anybody get these symptoms so the, the we have to check the, the sodium levels in the serum sodium levels so next one is the chloride so the chloride is the nothing but is the is a is going to together with the sodium iron also potassium carbon dioxide chloride maintains the normal acid balance of the body is a, through the balancing body fluid so these are also is going to combine with the sodium and potassium and uh, carbon dioxide so is going to maintain the normal acid basic balance in the body so if there is no chloride so it may chance to give the other complication so abnormal changes in the serum chloride levels usually indicated of the metabolic changes in the body so if the abnormal levels so it indicates that the metabolic activities are going to be uh, altered so is most commonly if you see the normal range it will be 95 to 105 milli equivalent per liters so this is the normal levels so if if it is increase or decrease is going to alter the the balance like is uh, acid base balance so this is about the chloride like uh, levels coming to the calcium so this also usually is binded with the protein in the blood for this reason standard calcium test can be is misleading and also determination of the ionized calcium is recommended so special line also uh, calcium test will be the different two levels is ionized test and also isolated is going to be separate individual uh, calcium so determining the serum calcium level is important if the patient is suffering from the existing nerve or motor dysfunctions so this also going to be so these are all nothing but electrolytes also going to be mainly to transmit the impulse and also is mainly the plays role in the muscle contractions so if any abnormality in these electrolytes is going to be affect to the all the like uh, acid balance balance going to be altered and also nerve and also muscle function is going to be altered so and also coming to the the normal range if you see the normal range 8.5 to the 10.5 is a milli equivalents so these are the normal ranges so about the calcium so and also if you see here the causes of the hypercalcemia so many reasons are there so this we will learn in the we can learn in the in medical conditions and especially for who have the excessive vitamin d excessive like a uh, vitamin a sarcoidosis so so many conditions hyperthyroidism and also if they take the calcium supplements so if they take the pro, like a, 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 a more content uh, like a more uh, high uh, percentage of the calcium so it may give the is a hypercalcemia so we can remember these things with the like a mnemonics like a chimpanzee c for the calcium supplements h for the hyperthyroidism is i for the iatrogenic as because of the treatment or investigation purpose and also in case of the multiple myeloma any like a tumor like a cancerous like a multiple myeloma and also parathyroid hyperplasia or adenoma like a cancer type alcoholism neoplasms especially the breast cancer lung cancer and also dwelling cell syndrome and also vitamin d Uh, excessive vitamin D, iron also excessive vitamin E, and sarcoidosis. So these are the, some of the causative factors for the hypercalcemia. So maybe if the calcium less calcium, this also may change the alter the bone functions. So and also may chance to get the easily degenerative changes. Maybe osteoporotic symptoms also may chance to get the because of the deficiency of the calcium also.
So magnesium, so this is also very, very important, uh, like uh, electrolyte, so in case of the muscle and nerve functions, and blood pressure regulations and immune system. It also plays a role in the blood sugar regulations. So it helps in the, especially for the blood regulation, blood pressures, and also muscle and nerve. And next about that, it also helps in the is immune system regulation, also strengthen the immune system. So, and also who have the diabetes, so it may alter in the, this magnesium levels also, it may chance to get the altered the blood sugar levels. Although half of the magnesium in the body is stored in the bones, magnesium can also be found in the cells of the organs and body tissues. So this is going to be normally stored in the, the bones, but you are having this uh, deficiency, so may chance to get the muscle and functions. So the normal levels are going to be 1.5 to the 2.5 milli equivalents per liters. So this is the normal range. So if you want to improve, if anybody having the problem with the magnesiums, so with the, especially for the leafy vegetables and also nuts, especially like a dry fruits, such as uh, like a almonds and also Melon seeds are going to be more useful and also avocado. So these are the important sources for the magnesiums. It will help to improve the magnesium levels. Next one is the phosphorus. So this phosphorus is involved in the okay, intracellular metabolism of the protein and fats and carbohydrates. It is also participate in the production of the ATP. So our energy, so without uh, like a, a phosphorus, so it won't produce the uh, ATP production during the uh, Krebs cycle. So, and also phosphorus plays an important role in the acid-base balance and also in the glycolysis. So, in the glycolysis, so is also a main role to produce the ATP. So, without ATP, that ATP means production of the energy, nothing but. So, these things are going to be play an important role in the acid-base balance and also glycolysis. So, the normal range will be is the 1.8 to the 2.6 milli equivalents per liters. So, this is the normal range. So, if you know these normal levels, so if anybody gets the abnormal, like a, all these uh, electrolytes, so we can easily identify, so we can predict the what are having the conditions. And also, other test is called as the blood urea nitrogen and also creatine, also called as BUN. This is also. So, this is the, if you see here, the blood levels are too metabolically are produced by substances urea and creatine. So in the metabolic activities, so this the blood urea, nitrogen, and creatine is going to be, uh, so these are the two substances, are also routinely used to evaluate the renal functions. So if you want to check the kidney functions, so these are the major tests. And also the kidneys, through the filtration and tubular secretions, normally eliminate both. So that means, so normally you can filter this one, excretory system, these are the end products. So the urea end product of the protein metabolism is measured as the blood urea nitrogen. So this is nothing but is the uh, protein metabolism end products, whatever you take, what, how what the protein is going to be exchanged, or maybe end product, the end product will be the blood urea. So, and also this is going to be the normal range from the seven to 18 milligrams per deciliters. So that's why if anybody take the protein rich food, so who are having some complications, protein rich food, so the end product will be the, the blood urea nitrogen. So in case of, for example, uh, uh, gout, for, uh, in the gout, so what happened in the joints, the urea crystals are going to be increased. So what happened? So the uric, because of the urea level is going to be increased. So there's a reasons who already having the gout or maybe is the, if anybody having joint pains, so they should not take much the, the protein diet, especially for the gout patients. So that is the main indicators who are having, so they have to restrict or maybe avoid the high protein diet. So, and also this one is going to be, next one is the creatine. Creatine is uh, produced in the relatively constant quantities by the muscles and excreted by the kidneys. So the amount of creatine in the blood relates to the renal excretory function. So that means if it is a high uh, in the renal, in the kidney, so it is because of the kidney, uh, kidney excretory product. So it will be in the normally, if you see the male 0 0.6 to 1.2 milligrams per deciliters, in the females will be is the 0 0.5 to 1 mg per the deciliters, slightly lesser than the men. So these are the, the normal values of the creatine. So next about the serum osmolality. Serum osmolality is a measure of the, the solute concentration of the blood. So in the serum, how much the blood, the serum osmolality also can be estimated by the doubling the serum sodium. Because of sodium and its associated chloride ions are the major determinants of the serum osmolality. 
So the serum mass molarity values are used to primarily to evaluate the fluid, fluid balance. So here we have to know the, the pH level as serum, the osmolality. So how much the base as serum, like a, they're going to check the fluid balance. If any abnormality in this, the osmolality, so it may use the, the acid-base balance and also fluid, fluid balance. So an increase in the serum osmolality indicates the, the fluid volume deficient. So it's going to be the fluid volume, so that's the increase the serum osmolality is going to be increased. A decrease reflects the fluid volume excess. So if the fluid volume excess means is going to be decreased, the serum osmolality is going to be decreased. The normal osmolality will be 280 to 300 is a milli for the kg. So these are the normal values of the serum osmolality. And also next one is the, especially for the drug monitoring. So this drug monitoring, this therapeutic drug monitoring is often conducted when the client is taking medications with a narrow therapeutic range. So such as the digoxin, theophylline, and also aminoglycosides. So the digoxin is mainly for the digitalis, so especially for the cardiac, and also theophylline is the, who already have like a bronchodilators. So these are going to be helpful. So in case of it, the narrow therapeutic like a ranges. So this monitoring the therapeutic levels and not the subtherapeutic or toxic levels. So this also going to monitoring for the therapeutic purpose, how much their level, how much they're taking, how they're going to be effect. So the peak level indicates the highest concentration of the drug, drug in the bloodstream and also through the level of represents the lowest concentration. So it's going to be the way the peak level indicates the highest concentration. So if anybody has taking the high concentration of the drugs, so we can it is going to find in the blood serums. So, and also is going to be through the levels represents the lowest concentration. So if it's lowest concentration means, so they're lacking the, the normal amount or with the minimal amount only. So I'm coming to the next one also very important test is the blood gas analysis. So these are going to be blood gas analysis is the another important diagnostic procedures. So it's going to be especially the nurses, medical technician, respiratory therapist. So normally take the specimen for the arterial blood from the radial, brachial and femoral arteries. So this is going to be the arterial blood gas. So they're going to take the blood from the artery for checking the, the gas exchange. How, so how much of the gas exchange takes place in the blood? So that means uh, who are having some any respira like a respiratory diseases as well as the blood diseases, we are going to find the, especially mainly how the carbon dioxide oxygen levels are going to be exchanged in the lung. So we are going to easily identify through the, this arterial blood gas analysis. So if you see the arterial blast gas analysis, so normal is going to be the acid base is going to be, we are going to check the normal pH is going to be 7.35 and also partial carbon dioxide will be the, and also 35 to 45 and also bicarbonate will be the 22 to 26. So these are the normal levels. So if you see in the respiratory acidosis, so the pH level is going to be decreased and also carbon dioxide level is going to be increased. And also there is no changes in the bicarbonate. So in case of alkalosis, that means pH increase, pH is decrease means acidosis. If the pH concentration normally is seven, for example, if the pH is lowered down, if it is six or five, the concentration is going to be increased. So it's going to be all, is all acidosis. The alkalosis means is going to be the pH level is going to be increased above the 7.35. And also here is going to be carbon dioxide levels are going to be decreased. And also metabolic acidosis, this uh, pH levels are going to be decreased and the carbon dioxide is not going to, is not going to change. And also bicarbonate also going to be changed. So this is a metabolic one. Metabolic one is the concentration is going to be decreased in the, so in the pH level, but also both bicarbonate also going to be involved. Here is uh, alkalosis is going to be altered to the opposite to the acidosis. So that means the pH level is going to be increased as well as bicarbonate levels are going to be increased. So these tests are very, very important. Nowadays, most in, the, in this pandemic situation, I think most of the people who already join in the hospital, every day they have to check for the, this blood gas analysis to find out the, uh, to how much the oxygen saturation is there. So if anybody having the low saturation levels, so they may chance to get the difficulty in breathing. Sometimes if they low, very low, if more than 50 percentage, sometimes they require the ventilations or if there's a, if more than that thing also may chance to die because of the improper oxygen like exchanges, like gas exchanges. So coming to the, the blood chemistry. 
So number of the other tests may be performed on the blood serums. So it's going to be liquid portion of the blood. So these are going to be so many different types. Example, the cardiac makers. So sorry, the cardiac markers such as the CPK and also myoglobulin and also serum phosphokinase and also sorry, creatine phosphokinase, troponin T and also troponin I. So are, these are going to be released into the blood during the myocardial infarctions. So if anybody, if you want to know the cardiac function, cardiac muscle functions, so we have to do the cardiac markers. So especially for you have risk factors of the myocardial infarction and a heart attack. So these has to check. And also elevated levels of these markers in the venous blood can help differentiate between the MI, that's myocardial infarction and chest pain that is caused by angina or fluoridic pain. So we can know that is the chest pain is because of the cardiogenic chest pain or maybe it's because of the non-cardiogenic chest pain. In the last class, while explaining the chest pain, so we already discussed about the, so how the different causative factors, what are the differential diagnosis of the chest pain. So there we can differentiate easily with the biochemistry test, especially for the cardiac markers. So in addition to the serum electrolytes, carbon chemistry is examination including the determining the certain enzymes. So that may be present, including the lactic dehydrogenase, and also creatine kinase, aspirate amino transferase, is the alanine amino transferase, serum glucose, and also hormones such as thyroid hormone, so, and cholesterol, triglycerides. So, these are also some other diagnostic, blood diagnostic tests. So, with the, like a, the, these are the like a blood chemistry. So, these tests also relieve the, uh, reveal the, so many type of the conditions about the symptoms. So, how is going to be altered? So these are going to be the, uh, just now we discussed the cardiac markers that is creatine kinase. So this is an enzyme found in the heart and skeletal muscles. So possible cause of the increasing the, this is the enzyme in acute myocardial infarctions, myocarditis, that is the inflammation of the cardium, myocardium, and also cerebrovascular accident, muscular dystrophy, and chronic alcoholism. So this crease, uh, creatine kinase is going to be increased. So if anybody having, so this is the, in case of the pathological changes, it may alter. So this enzyme found, especially in the heart and skeletal muscles. So if you see the normal values is going to be 38 to 174 units per liters in the men. So it will be in the, is a 26 to 140 in the, uh, fem in the women. So these are the normal levels. So they who are having in the, this uh, pandemic situation also, uh, many people are exposed to this type of test because of the one of the side effects after the COVID. Also, they may chance to get the so many heart abnormalities they can found who are having like a comorbidity risk factors such as the hypertension, diabetes, and also cardiac diseases. So, and also who are having the high triglycerides levels. So, this also going to be is altered in case of the pathological heart diseases. And also myoglobulin also. Myoglobulin. So, after the MI, the serum levels, myoglobin rise in the two to four hours. So after myocardial infarctions, so this uh, myoglobin levels are going to be increased. So in making it is early is a marker for the muscle damage in the MI, possible cause of the increase uh, increases, including the MI, angina, other muscle injuries. And also in the renal failure and also rhabdomyolysis. So in those conditions, so this myoglobin is going to be increased. So this one is, is a rhabdomyolysis means so what is the rhabdomyolysis? Is nothing but is the this is the life-threatening syndrome in the breakdown of the resulting from the breakdown of the skeletal muscle fiber. So if any damage of the skeletal muscle fibers, so which leak the leakage of the muscle content into the blood circulations, whatever the uh, content is there in the muscle in the skeletal muscles, so the after breakdown the content is going to be circulated into the bloodstream, so it may cause the, the severe damage, so may chance to get the life-threatening. And also the most common cause to factor for the, the rhabdomyolysis is the crush injuries. Crush injuries, if any severe crush injury, the fibers are going to get the damage or tear or this is the, whatever the content is there is going to be released into the circulations. And also over exertions. So in case of over exertions and also alcohol abuse and certain medications and toxic substances, uh, and a substance also may chance to get the, this rhabdomyolysis. So that is the breakdown of the skeletal fibers. So this normal value, if you see here, the seven, five to 17 nanograms per the milliliters. So in the one milliliter, so is going to be the seven, five to 70 nanograms. So these are the normal values about the uh, myoglobulins. 
So coming to the troponin I and troponin T, so these are the cardiac makers. So it's also is a, is a highly concentrated in the heart muscles. So this test is used in the early diagnosis of the MI, myocardial infarction. After MI, after myocardial infarction, troponin 1 begins to increase two to four hours and remains elevated, is going to be five to seven days. The troponin T is, begins to increase in the three to four hours, remains elevated for the 10 to 14 days. If it is elevated, is going to alter the, the cardiac muscle function. So it's going to be alter the heart function. So it, that's the reasons these tests are going to be very, very crucial to diagnose the heart functions, such as the um, uh, uh, myoglobin and also troponin I and also tree and also creatine kinase. So these are the major like cardiac markers. So these are the, like a, uh, these tests will help to rule out the myocardial infarction, either, either cardiogenic or maybe it's because of the angina, we can differentiate it. The normal one is the, the values of the troponin I is going to be 0 0.35 nanograms per liter and the troponin T will be is the 0 0.2 nanograms per uh, milliliter. So these are the normal levels of the uh, cardiac markers. And also coming to the liver function test. So liver function test, also called as this uh, LN9 amino transferase, formerly known as the serum pyritic transferase. So also called as, also called HGPT. So these are the SGPT or SGOT. So these are going to be, mainly we are going to do for the, to know the liver function. So how the, in case of liver cirrhosis or in case of, uh, especially who are having like a liver disease or hepatitis, in those conditions, most probably we have to do the liver functions. So these are going to be, is a hepatic injury and also the liver damage and also aspirate amino transferase. So these things are going to be, is a more specific of the liver damage then the aspirate amino transferase. So the normal values are for the, this liver function test, the LN9 amino transferase. So it will be the men 10 to 55 units per liters. In the, in the women, it will be the seven to 30 units. So these are all the like a diagnostic procedures. We have to know what is the normal values. If we know the normal, so we can easily understand if anybody get the abnormality. So that's the reasons we have to just, what are the tests we are going to expose in the clinical practice so just we have to do uh, like and know about the, the all the tests, get the, some knowledge about the, all these tests. So next one is the AST that is aspirate amino transferase is a formerly known as the SGOT. So previously one is the we called as SGPT and also SGOT. So these are also going to found in the heart, liver, skeletal muscles. Can also use to indicate the liver injury. So that's why you are having some abnormality in the liver function is either because of the hepatitis or because of the liver cirrhosis or any infections. So the, especially these tests is rule out the any damage is there. And also if any, how the, the liver function is working. So we can know the with the SGOT and also we are going to check with the SGPT. So these are the two tests for the uh, liver function test. And also next one is the liver function test, including the prothrombin. So this prothrombin is a protein produced by the liver for the clotting of the blood. So this also going to check. So it will be, uh, in, uh, it will be in the normal values 11 to 13 seconds. In the critical value 20 seconds for the non uh, like a anticoagulant persons. So who are having some problem with the like a blood disorders. So it will be the 20 seconds. So these are the prothrombin. So this will be the all the liver uh, functions and also lipoprotein profiles. So lipoprotein profile means how much the cholesterol levels, how much the like a uh, triglycerides. So we are going to found the different tests. So these are going to be cholesterol. So this cholesterol also is this test an important screening for the heart diseases. So especially if anybody get the uh, atherosclerosis and also arteriosclerosis. So these cholesterol levels are going to be increased. So if you see this cholesterol, so different types of the cholesterols are there. So HDL, so that is the high density lipoprotein cholesterol, LDL, low density lipoprotein cholesterol. So and also we are going to found the triglycerides, high density lipoprotein, low density lipoprotein and triglycerides. So these are the important and are markers, especially to rule out the heart diseases, such as in case in those uh, like who are obese or who are having the triglycerides or atherosclerosis symptoms, or who have some symptoms related to the cardiac uh, like abnormality. So these tests, if we do, we can found out the, the level of the cholesterol levels. So this one high density lipoprotein cholesterol is a class of lipoproteins produced by the liver. 
and also intestine and this is nothing but is the good cholesterol so it should be is the normally 35 to 65 milligrams per deciliters in the men and also 35 to 80 will be in the milligrams in the deciliters for the women so at least should be minimum to minimum everybody should get this one is the 60 uh, milligrams per deciliter is the normal so if we have to increase the high density lipoprotein if you want to reduce your heart attacks so we try to increase the this uh, normal levels but we have to reduce the low density lipoproteins so these are called as the is nothing but is the low density lipo is the is the bad cholesterol so up to 70 percentage of the uh, this total serum cholesterol is present in the LDL. So most of the people who are like a high, or like a uh, atherosclerosis or obesity or cardiac risk factors or if any, any like a fat or uh, heavy, like a moderate obesity also. So the sedentary lifestyle or health, unhealthy diet. So these are all may chance to get the, is uh, increasing the LDL percentage that is a low density lipoprotein. So if you see this one is a normally is 130 milligrams per deciliter is the normal. But it depends upon the, they are like a health status or physical activity and also healthy diet. So it may alter the, this LDL levels. And also one more thing, uh, who are having stress, anxiety and depression also may affect the, this LDL levels. It may increasing the cholesterol levels. So that also according to research articles. So it shows and proven who have like a high, like a stress and also depression levels. So this uh, lipoprotein is going to be increased. And also coming to the triglycerides. So these triglycerides also, so these tests are going to be, is evaluate the suspected atherosclerosis and measure the body ability to metabolize the fat. So it's going to be, we, we can easily understand the, so how much of the fat accumulation inside the blood vessels. Is atherosclerosis means narrowing of the blood vessels because of the fatty plaques deposition in the blood vessels. So in these blood vessels, the blood layers, if you see the blood cell, uh, blood, uh, like a, uh, blood uh, walls, if you see the artery layers is going to be tunica intima inside layer, tunica media is the middle layer, tunica adventitia or externa is the outer layer. So these layers are going to become thickening. So what happened? The layers are going to be thick. And also because of the thickness, the lumen size is going to be decreased because of the wall thickness. Now, if you see the blood vessel wall, the lumen size inside the content is going to be like a thick and narrowed. So it may give the atherosclerosis. It may produce the, like a, the high blood pressure. So they may chance to get the high blood pressure. Because of this high blood pressure, they may chance to get the thrombosis because of the plagues or this thrombosis breakdown may chance to get the embolus formations because of this thrombus and embolus formations. So many people may chance to get the cardiac diseases as well as may chance to get the cardio cere cerebrovascular accidents that is a stroke may chance to get. So these tests are very, very important to diagnose the, the triglyceride, the bad cholesterol levels. So it should be less than the 100 mg per uh, deciliters. So next one is the HbA1c. So it's, uh, it's commonly is uh, seen in the it's a diabetic. So nothing but is uh, to know the blood sugar levels. So a common laboratory test is called as is the glycosylated hemoglobin or hemoglobin A1c. So it's, uh, it's going to be nothing but simply understanding purpose the blood glucose levels. So blood glucose levels are going to be found in the you know, it's going to be bound to hemoglobin. So we are going to check the what is the sugar levels in the blood. So this test is called is the hemoglobin A1c. So that means uh, how the hemoglobin is bound to the, the like a glucose bound to the hemoglobin is going to found in the, in the blood. So this is going to be reflection of how well, well the blood glucose levels have been controlled during the year to three to four months. So this one is going to be concentration we have to check. So the normal range will be is the four to 5.5. So this is the normal range, but in, this is during the fasting time. So if it is the after the, the after taking the meal or maybe food, so it will be is going to be increasing the 6.5. So also is a normal. So but in the we have to check whether the, uh, these things are going to be fasting and also we have to check the preprandial that is a fasting as well as the postprandial after taking them food also we have to check to analyze the the blood glucose levels. And also next about the capillary blood glucose levels. So this capillary blood glucose levels, the capillary blood specimen is taken 
uh, is often taken to measure the blood glucose when the frequent tests are required or when the wean puncture cannot be performed. So sometimes some may chance to get the complications if the wean, pu wean puncture is not possible. So in those conditions, capillary blood glucose are going to take. So this is going to be measure the blood glucose when frequent tests are required. So it's, it's continuously, if they're taking continuously, if not possible to take the blood from the, like a, uh, from the vein, because of the vein punctures, so they're going to take the capillary blood glucose. So this technique is less painful than the vein puncture and also easily performed. Hence the clients can perform this technique is on themselves. So even the clients also, they can check themselves and also capillary levels. Maybe you can see some different type of equipments you can found in the, in nowadays in the, in the, in the market or in the pharmacy, just they're going to take the pin prick. So they're going to collect the blood from the capillary. So from there, they're going to get the self analysis of the blood glucose levels. So if you want to check the, your blood test, uh, check the blood glucose levels, most of the people are going to use this, like a, such as so many like a uh, ready-made equipments. So who are already like a diabetic, so they no need to go regularly uh, to the like investigation procedure purpose. So they can check the, their blood level, glucose levels at home if they're using the, this capillary blood methods. So these are going to be easy to check the like blood glucose levels through the print prick and also through the, the blood glucose analysis equipment. So these are going to be, we can see so many different type of uh, this blue glucose monitors. So these are going to check with the, so these glucometers can vary in the following ways. That is amount of the blood needed, testing speed, size, and also ability to store the results, cost of the meter and the test strips. So it depends upon the, these equipments will be different, the cost and also the price will be different because of the uh, automatic, that is the digital one, or maybe the uh, many numbers of the sticks and also the quality of the, this meter also, the price is going to be altered. So this one is going to be capillary test. So we are going to do the normal blood sugar levels are the less than 100 mg per deciliters after the not eating, that is a fasting. So it's going to be fasting, this should be less than 100. And also, and they are the less than 140 is uh, two hours after the eating. So after for food, after two hours, if they check the blood glucose level, we should not cross the 140. So if in case of if less than, uh, have more than 140 sometimes, so may depends upon the person to person health status may reach to the 400 and 500 also. So depends upon the comorbidities if they're having other complications, if the sugar levels are not controlling properly. So if the, there is no improper circulation of the insulin, uh, if there is no improper uh, like a uh, balance of the insulin or maybe no, no proper production of the insulin also may chance to alter the high blood pressures. And also sometimes if they overdose, also sometimes may give the complications of the insulin. So those things before checking and after they have to rule out, is it because the, the values are less because of the uh, control of the blood sugar levels or because of the high dose of the uh, uh, insulin levels. So these are the very, very important while checking the uh, blood glucose levels. And during this, the day, the level tend to be their lowest just before the meal. So that means they have to always check for the, before the meal, so it will be shows the clear information. After meal also it shows, but it should take the, after the two hours of the meal, it's showing that it should be less than 140 grams, milligrams per deciliters. So these are the different type of the uh, investigation procedures to give the clues and also to give the conclusion to the diagnosis along with the physical examinations and also, uh, and also the signs and symptoms with the history and also clinical examination and with the investigation procedures, uh, some of the different type of the investigation, blood investigation procedures will give the conclusion to finalize the, uh, about the conditions, the diagnosis. So these are the important diagnostics of the blood and also so many other diagnostic uh, also tests also available. We can check for the, some urine analysis and fecal analysis and also culture and sputum culture. And next we can do the genetic analysis, some electro like a, uh, invasive techniques, or maybe is a, is a imaginary uh, techniques. So that may imaging techniques, X-ray and CT scan and MRI scan, angiogram, PET scan. So, so many different uh, ECG, that is uh, EEG. So, and so many different uh, equipments are in some uh, methods are there to diagnose the uh, complications. So these are the, some of the di blood diagnosis. Mm, so th that's all about this topic. 
so hope you understand about these topics and if you interpret these conditions along with the abnormalities so you can easily understand and also you can apply this knowledge to evaluating the diseases okay that's all about today's topic so see you in the next class so we will discuss another examinations and we will discuss some more important points thank you very much